Outlook and Teams are replacing First Class as the district's primary communication tool. We are excited to move to Outlook and Teams as these tools provide us with new and improved methods of communication and collaboration. First Class will remain available with all of its features until the end of the school year, after which it will be accessible but as read-only and with the ability to forward mail. At the end of the next school year, it will be fully decommissioned. As Outlook and Teams will be rolled out to staff gradually between this April and June, staff will need to check their conferences, such as staff conferences or other conferences that you might belong to. Once all staff have been moved over to Outlook and Teams, Teams will become the new means of communicating. Outlook will be the primary email, contacts, and calendar tool replacing First Class. Outlook Mail will be primarily used for external communications and more formal communications for example, emails to parents, invitations, and events, while most other communication will take place in Teams. Does this mean that we will not be emailing each other? Probably not, but as staff become more comfortable in Teams, we anticipate what was once an email will soon become a message in Teams. Teams has multiple features that allow for communication and collaboration. Some of these features include channels, chat, and video conferencing. Now let's watch this short video that introduces us to each of these. Teams can be viewed in two different ways, either as a grid or you can switch the view to view it as a list. Let's remain in the grid view. So within Teams, there will be some common teams that all staff belong to. For instance, district staff, Outlook and Teams help, are teams that all staff belong to. And then there are others that are unique to groups of staff. For instance, ITS will only have staff from the ITS department. You are automatically added to some teams, for instance, the team for your school or department you are working at, while membership to other teams requires that you be added manually by the team's owner. At this time, creation of teams has been centralized. A process for requesting a team to be created is currently being developed. Let's look within a team. On the far left, you can see the channels. Each team will have a variety of channels, but all teams have a general channel. All team members can post and view to the general channel, and this is where information that is relevant to all members is posted. Now most channels are public, which allows members of the team to view the conversation and files. As some conversations may involve more sensitive information, channels can also be made private by the team's owner. For instance, a school-based team may have a private channel to communicate their information. Let's look at the channels within a team for a school. So within this school's team, you can see there's a general channel, and then there are some other channels, and then there are also some hidden channels. Channels can be hidden or shown by just clicking and then off to the right you can see I can have it shown. I just wait a moment and it will appear here so now we can see it. So each school will have certain standard channels but other channels can be added later. Within a channel new conversations can be started and others can reply. Files can also be attached as part of the conversation which are then saved to the file structure. To start a conversation, click on the new conversation and add your text. You also have some opportunity to add various features from below, including files. Files that are added to a conversation are also automatically added to the files up top. Files can also be uploaded here and new files created, including folders to help keep things organized. Channels provide a number of ways for staff to communicate and collaborate on projects. So let's say I was a member of this team here and I was an intermediate teacher. If I was beginning to work on a unit and required some resources or help, I could go directly to the intermediate channel and post a new conversation seeking help from my colleagues. In the same way, if I had a resource to share, I could do it in the same way. How might you do this in a channel? Well, if I was looking for those resources, I could start here with a new conversation type in my question and then post it and then wait a reply from a colleague. 
Now, anyone who belongs to this team, because this is a public channel, would see this, but it would likely be my intermediate colleagues. And that's, if, you know, if this was an intermediate um, channel. So they might come in and then reply and attach a resource. In the same way, perhaps I have found a resource. I can type some text. I can add a variety of resources and ways. But I'm just going to attach this one here. Upload from my computer. And this PDF is now uploaded. Now remember, because it was uploaded here, it will also appear in the files. And here it is. Please keep in mind that any documents that are posted here within these files are editable by all members that have access. Another way to communicate is through chat. Chat allows for informal conversations that are usually looking for short or quick responses. For instance, if I needed a copy of a specific document and I know my colleague had one, I might use chat to request that document. Chats can include several people, such as this one, but should not take the place of a channel where a channel is available. A conversation can be started in a chat, and just like in a channel, you could add a file or, a number, or you have a number of other features here. Again, we have a files within chat, which stores any file that is shared within the chat. In this day of instant messaging, it is important that users respect the boundaries that others may have set for themselves. Beginning a chat well after work hours requesting information may not be appropriate. One last method of communication within Teams is the video conferencing feature. Teams video conferencing will be replacing Zoom at the end of the school year. To begin a video conference immediately, start within Teams and the calendar. By clicking on the calendar, we have two options. We can meet now, where we can enter the names of the people that we want to meet with, and then start. Or we can create a new meeting, where it is scheduled within our calendar, where we can add all attendees. Once we add attendees, a link can be shared with them, or the link can be copied and shared via an email for external users. Another way we can start a quick video conference is through chat. Within my chat, I have an option to create a video conference immediately. This will include all of the members of the chat and send them a message that we will be conferencing. We hope this quick video has provided you with an overview of the new communication tools replacing first class. We know there are still many questions, and to help with these, we've created some resources, including a help site, an Outlooks and Teams help team, videos on our YouTube channel, help guides, and a help desk. Thanks for watching.